Hello and welcome back to the Sizecape Gaming Podcast, episode 96. I'm your host, Jake Burke, and joined, as always, by, and only by, James St. Charles. Hello. Hello. James, how are you? Doing excellent. How what is you? What is the best content that you've consumed that's not a video game recently? Like a show? Uh, like a book? Yeah, I, I'm, I'm starting to rewatch uh, Love, Death, and Robots. Oh, that's that Netflix Oh, show, have you not right? seen that? No, the sci-fi Netflix thing. It's, yeah, it's like a uh, man. It they be, it's like a show, but it, it's really just a compilation of animation short mm-hmm. stories. Maybe like ten to twelve minute episodes. And the first season is amazing because it has like a bunch of unique animations. Second season sucks. Okay, so don't watch second season. And then third season is coming out Friday. Ooh. But basically, you don't have to watch anything in order. You can watch two episodes from a season and be like, okay, that's it. Huh. And then, yeah, so it's like everything has, it has like self-contained episodic mini short stories with different animation styles. And the third season is going to carry, propagate from the first season. Okay. So that's why I'm interested in the third season. So. Because there's some really good stuff in there and I want to see. Watch the first season. Yeah. Okay. It's it's good. It's, it's a, but definitely not like every episode's good. It's like one or, you know. Yeah. Pro, pro, a handful are amazing and then some are average and some suck. So. <laughs> But enough about Netflix, James, because this is the 96th episode of the Sidescape Gaming Podcast, where every Monday morning an episode goes live on YouTube.com, and that's it. Once a week, we sit yes. down in Discord of 500 Miles, talk about a gaming-related topic, and what gamers were playing. No Ted this week. He is uh, sitting at his parents' house, I think. Quarantine. Yeah, still his parents. Yep. I, he's playing Skyrim on the Switch, actually. I can confirm that, because when I was playing Kirby earlier, he was playing Skyrim. That's you guys friends? Have. Yeah, yeah, on Switch, not in real life. Are we on not Switch. friends on Switch? Okay. I don't think we are. Yeah. But I lived with Ted, you know, when he had a Switch. Did I? Oh. I don't know. Yeah, you did. Yeah. I think I did. Yeah, 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 yeah. Got you, got you. Yeah. Um, I played a little bit of Kirby. Played, I'm like, like 40 minutes of this Kirby game. 40 minutes, okay. <laughs> Is that more or less than you expected me to have played That's, that's less a, than when you borrow a game. You're like, hey, I'm going to borrow this game. And you only did 40 minutes. I've had it for like a week and a half. I feel kind of bad, actually. <laughs> um, eh. Yeah. Eh. Yeah. Eh. That's how I feel I like. don't get why some people like it. <laughs> it it's, it's nothing like groundbreaking. Yeah, it, just kind of, it feels kind of like... I remember playing Crystal Shards on the N64... And it feels kind of like, just like that. And like, they, that's all they, yeah. they just took that game and just did it again. And that so, game was great. Yeah, but it was like, 64. that was like, yeah, 20 years ago or whatever. Yeah, they haven't been coming out with a good game since. No, they, they made that one uh, yarn game, right? Wasn't that? No, that was Yoshi. Yeah. Yoshi, yeah. That was Yoshi. Did Kirby have a yarn game? Kirby had some yarn game, I think, on the DS. Maybe he had a yarn game. I yeah. don't know. You know what? Okay. I've been playing that this year, but James, we're not going to play a certain two games this year. I try to really stretch that transition. Um, this comes from Bethesda. We've made the decision to delay the launches of Redfall and Starfield to the first half of 2023. The teams at Arcane Austin, Redfall, and Bethesda Game Studios, Starfield, have uh, incredible ambitions for their games, and we want to ensure that you receive the most polished versions of them. We want to thank everyone for their excitement for Redfall and Starfield. That energy is a huge part of what inspires us all every day and drives our own excitement for what we are creating. So... Starfield, they called their shot a year ago. They said 11, 11, 22, 11 years after Skyrim. And it's not gonna happen. Yeah. What do you think? What's, what's going through your head? Um, this is what I think would happen, which I don't know if it was reported anywhere, but I, what I think was happening is they showed it off to Phil mm-hmm. and Phil said, this is absolute shit. We're delaying this. Are you kidding me? We spent money buying Bethesda. This is what you're going to like put out there. No, but I love it's that, getting that's the, his reaction. It's yeah, like, that was his reaction. You're dog no, shit. <laughs> but it's it's basically it reminds me of the the God of War kind of thing when they showed off the game to their to higher ups and they said it was absolutely yeah. awful. And they're like, oh shit, and they delayed it. You know, well, I, I think it's gonna get that kind of thing. It's like, all right, you guys need more time, obviously, and it's understandable. I mean, they just, I I think more time for this type of game from how, how it's been described is needed especially if there are any of those classic bethesda bugs because it's gonna make it absolute shit i yeah I, I think you're right i think that they played it and it wasn't fu- like the game wasn't fun right the, and like not not in a bad way like it was fundamentally broken but i think like 
combat wise bethesda is is kind of old and kind of outdated and like what has now been do- done in first person rpgs yeah. um fallout 4 really showed that when they kind of just dropped it and it came out the same year as the witcher 3 it was like very vastly different quality of games so i'm, I'm thinking that's probably what spawned yeah. this but i think this is the final delay conservative delay it's not like okay we're delaying you to yeah, they're giving them till next year yeah hold on james you're cutting in and out uh-oh i lost him okay oh you're back now you're back talk oh i've been good oh what? you you cut out okay you like cut out when on my sin. Um, so you're kind of saying you think this isn't fundamentally good. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. I think uh, the 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 stretch is good. I mean, maybe maybe they didn't need that long a time, but I think giving more time is what this what Bethesda needs, like mm-hmm. a good stretch. Yeah, um, I, and I'm, it's two games delayed. Right, Redfall, which which is funny because like Starfield is the big focus. But yeah, like, Redfall, I, I don't care. No, no, it's Starfield. Like, Redfall was weird. Like I never really expected that game to come out this year because we have heard not heard anything about it since they no. just showed a trailer. So that seemed less likely. But they were doing these like kind of regular Starfield updates, not showing gameplay, but like here's what the pirates in this our universe do, um, kind of thing. So it's just interesting that it just all of a sudden was like we got to do this. Um, do you think we see some stuff this summer? So they have their Xbox game summer. showcase June twelfth, June sixteenth, yeah. somewhere around there. I don't think we see either of these games at that. I don't think you can. I agree. Um, I think it was supposed to be. I think this was going to be the big Starfield blowout, and then they probably did some review, and they were they were like, "We can't release." Yeah, this, game. this is the time you're probably doing your review. You got one month, and it's like, "Yeah, this game's nowhere near ready." Yeah, like we can't show this game like we showed Halo Infinite and got. So what are they showing? It. Okay, so that's what I want to talk about really right here is yeah. Xbox has a big ass problem. They have no games announced. They have that are nothing coming out to show. Now Sony has God of War. Which is probably not coming out this year at this point. I don't now. I just don't believe it. But we'll see. I'm really curious. Like, what do they have? Do they have something that they're waiting on, or is Xbox not going to release a single exclusive here? Like, like, a, like a like a big exclusive. And, you know, maybe they do something small. But I don't know. Yeah, like I I just don't know what they have. And honestly, when you think about it, the year has started out extremely strong, and it's really dry right now. So, I think it's gonna be dry for the rest of the year. I mean, we've got and that's Saints a, yeah. Row. You're saying it's gonna be dry for the rest of the year, and I think that would suck. Yeah, I mean, Gotham's Knights right. even like that didn't look very good when it was shown recently. That yeah, underwhelming. Yeah, it is not. That, I don't know what's going on. I don't either. Yeah, I'm really kind of interested where we're going the rest of the year. Like, are we playing Elden Ring again in October? Because there's nothing. Yeah, I think left? I think we're gonna get that Elden Ring update that's gonna carry us for the rest of the year. <laughs> God, give me some DLC. <laughs> it's just the year of Elden Ring. I have to Maybe imagine... that's why everyone, no one cares. It's like, hey, Elder Ring won game of the year. Okay. <laughs> All right, we'll back off. Next year. We'll try again next year. We'll make our games better for next year. Yeah. I'm I'm curious, like, Microsoft, I think, has a big problem with all these studios that they've acquired and that nothing is, like, coming out. Um, yeah. I think it's weird that we haven't heard about a new Wolfenstein game from Machine Games. Like, they're working on an Indiana Jones game, but where is, is are they going to release a third Wolfenstein game? Because that game ended on a cliffhanger. Um... So like th- there's stuff that's like kind of missing there. We know that like there's there's something that's being done at Arcane Leon, but they just released Deathloop, so they're not ready to do anything. So it's just kind yeah. of interesting what is coming. Deathloop DLC? Maybe. I mean, yeah, Dishonored Talk- got all the DLCs, right? They always got DLC. Yeah, Dishonored got DLC. I'd be into that. Deathloop just had a big update too, but it was like engine update. So yeah. they're, they're still they're still doing stuff with it. Apparently it got harder. They like made the AI like a lot better. That's what I heard. That's kind of cool. Um, but I think Nintendo is interesting because Nintendo is a company that out of nowhere could announce Super Mario Galaxy 2 and it's coming out in October and it does. And I'm kind of curious if they've got some big game coming out this year. That's not, you know, Z- Zelda was supposed to be it. And do they have something else that's coming as well? They released Zelda and Mario Odyssey in the same year. So is there something still coming? Metroid? Metroid? No, there's no way Metroid. No, no, Prime's coming. Way I just want no that way. so bad. Um, I'm curious. I'm just curious what else is coming this year because it really looks dry. Like Saints Row, Gotham Knights, and that's the you know, like the only big ex- AAA games yeah. coming. So I, I don't, don't know. know. I don't either. I'm very interested. I'm excited it. for the summer though, just to see what things are talked about. So if we do get like some bombshell drops, like hey, this is actually going to come out in a couple months. Yeah. That'd yeah. Be nice. Ubisoft could have some something like that. 
like a Far yeah. Far Cry or something. Oh no, they no Far Cry Six came out Far Cry. recently. Yeah. That game yep. just totally forgettable. Did you even play Far Cry Six? Nope. Yeah. Well, totally yeah. forgot about it. Yeah. All right, James. I want to know what have, what have you been playing recently? What's a game that you've been playing? Okay, so I picked up the Switch again. Okay. I dusted it off, dust off the OLED, you know, let it shine. <laughs> yep. And uh, I went into my backlog of games I purchased like during Christmas, like a big like mm -hmm. lot of games. Uh, and I put in Luigi's Mansion Three. Wow. Yeah. Oh, I'm so and, fascinated. And I've I've played probably eight hours or so of it. Have you played the other Luigi's Mansions or any no. of them? Okay, me neither. But I I bought three specifically because in reviews I was reading it says you didn't need to play the others, and this is probably like the best Luigi's Mansion, and it was like kind of all encompassing. Okay, and that's true. You don't need any context. This kind of plays like a regular like Mario game in the sense that it's just like this is the story in its own third yeah. version. There's, you don't need the first or second, and the the gameplay. Explain to me this is, game like yeah. how it plays and works. Yeah, so the Luigi's Mansion basically is set up by like these floors are the levels and in three you're in you're in spoiler alert, you're in a hotel oh. so it's great oh, that's fun and you enter rooms and you have a magical vacuum basically that can like suck anything so all you do is you go to these rooms and you can vacuum up like cheats stuff in the drawers and you can collect some gold or you're trying to find ghosts or booze. And to fight the ghosts, you have like certain mechanics. You can use a flash to stun them and then start sucking on them with your vacuum. And mm -hmm. then once you get to a certain threshold of like how much you've sucked them up, you can throw them around. You can like bang them. It's incredibly fun. You just like okay. slam the ghosts into the ground to the wall. And then once you like get their health down to zero, you collect them basically. So that's that's fun. Like that's unique. But yeah. then there's like there's extra stuff in this game, like really interesting mechanics. There's like a different like void kind of like suction where you can like suck things that are like kind of invisible. There's this thing called Gooby, which is like you, but entirely goo. And it is the best thing ever. Isn't it reminds it Gooigi? me. Gooigi? Gooigi, sorry. Yeah, because yeah, yeah, it's Luigi yeah. and Gooigi. Yeah, he's just goo. Yeah. And uh, he. You can control him separately. It almost reminds me of like Mario and Luigi superstars, like where you can control like the others like separately. Mm -hmm. And it is amazing, like the kind of like puzzles and stuff you can like do and think about. So when you enter a room, you're basically like, all right, what do I need to do? Do I need to go here? Did I go here? Did I use this my Luigi to go over here? Uh, do I need to use a plunger? You have a plunger you can shoot out and suck the string to pull stuff down. It, it is okay. just really great mechanics, and the level design is amazing and there's a boss like every floor and the bosses all have unique abilities i've had i'm having such a blast and it's not even like oh okay this is easy you just suck it and go there is really difficult stuff you got to figure out stuff on the fly so of. so is there like the puzzles are they kind of are they hard to somewhat figure out sometimes or is it no. like 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 playing this kirby game recently like the, today for 40 minutes it was a breeze and i barely had to think about anything and that sucked yeah some some puzzles are a little hard but uh -huh. the, but the challenging puzzles are like finding these like secret gems like to complete okay. a level like you can find extra gems and they're usually just like hidden behind secrets so it's like oh there's like this little like tear in the wall you can suck or you can send your guiji over here and then use this ability yeah so it's like more like chained okay it's not super hard to like find certain like puzzle mechanics mm -hmm. i think the hardest part is the bosses sometimes they have like different mechanics like you can't use your flash sometimes you have to use your plunger Okay. Or you have to use like a void kind of like suction. It's that's where like the difficulty is. So Very figuring cool. out how the boss fights go and yeah, it's wow. it's it's quite the interesting game. Like I, having never played Luigi's Mansion, it's a different type of game. But I'm I'm, I'm liking it. And Luigi's voice actor, of course, you know he's Mario's voice actor. But yeah. he's it's just great. You like hear little like quips and he's always like scared to enter a room. And it's it's hilarious. Is he trying to find Mario in this game? Yeah, yeah. So okay. he's like Mario. Like, yeah, I remember that from the first game. Yeah, yeah. It, it's it's just like, you know, like Mario trying to find Peach. Yep. He's trying to find. Luigi's just trying to find Mario. Yeah. It's it's. I got it really cheap. I was like probably like twenty something bucks, and it's well worth it now. And oh, I wow. it, it got really great reviews when it first came out, I but I just, you know, just never, you know, never played it. Is every floor like 
the same standard looks like a hotel or are they like different environments on the floors? It, it'd be like a different environment. Like one floor would be like a movie studio or like a movie room. And then one floor could be like all like, like a garden. That's cool. Uh, it's they're They're entirely different. And basically like once you defeat a boss that you, you get on the elevator and the elevator is missing a bunch of buttons, but every boss you beat gives you a button so you can go to the next floor. Oh, it's cool. it's, it's kind of unique. So you're trying to like get to the top and you know, I think that's how it was for like the first game where you had to like fight King Boo or something. And you said you're collecting like gold or coins. Are you? Yeah, you col- oh. oh, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Are, are, what are you buying with that? Like, what do you use the coins for? Yeah, so you collect gold to. There's three things in the shop so far. I don't know if there's ever going to be more, but there's this thing called a gold bone, okay. which you have like a ghost dog pet. And they didn't really explain who this ghost dog pet is, so I'm guessing it's something from a previous game. Yeah, it must be. And he can like revive you hmm. so if you have one of these gold bones they cost like a thousand gold and you, you if you buy them in the inventory shop uh it, he'll revive you so you have like three lives basically so during like a, a fight and then if you you're get revived healthy. like a fairy in zelda yeah you'll just be revived in mid fight or mid okay. wherever you are and then you can buy these things called boo finders and gem finders and i just buy those whenever they're available because they're like they're stocked and the boo finders help you find boos so you can like collect those and the gem finders help you find these gems per floor. And okay. I haven't bought those because there's just so many. It's like, ah, there's no need. I, I, I could just find the gems. So the main thing is the gold bone. That's basically what you spend your money on. Okay. So that's, at least that's from what I've seen. Good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You've played eight hours of it. I wonder how many floors yeah. have you gone up and can you see how many floors there are to go? I think I have eight floors to go. I think I'm oh. halfway through the game. Okay. Wow. That's a long yeah, game. So I'm on, I'm on floor eight. Oh, very cool yeah wow, it's would... it's pretty long it's pretty in depth like some of the floors and puzzles like how you have to like navigate them it's quite it's quite interesting like to play it like yeah you know, that's i would not attack, have expected you, you to room. play this no yeah like yeah. I, I was just like yeah you know i'll just pop it in and see how it is if you see what people are talking about and i'm, I'm enjoying it it's that's awesome that's so yeah. great we well, just mentioned three any like final thoughts on it i mean obviously you're gonna um, finish it which is yeah, great. yeah yeah i mean can't wait to play more of it <laughs> Yeah. But anything else? Oh, looks great looks great on the OLED switch. I think okay. one complaint I had with Mario Rabbids is that it it has the screen size of the regular switch. I didn't know yeah, that. Yeah, so yeah, they never like updated it. So like the oh. screen is like actually a little bit smaller even though I could I have more screen with the OLED switch and this one actually like plays nicely like goes out to the full switch. That sucks. I, yeah, that does suck for like those older yeah, games. That I didn't know that. Haven't been updated. I think um, it's only with third-party games. Have you played it docked at all? Okay, I was just curious how it looked docked. Um, I don't. I mean, I don't know. I mean, yeah. I'm assuming the same, right? It's the same kind of. I don't know. Hardware. Yeah, Kirby looks a little meh on, on the TV, so I don't know. <laughs> that came out this year, so yeah, I've, I haven't played it docked yet, but I played it with the controller. And okay, very cool. That's, that's the best way to play it. We just mentioned three, man. We just what a shock, three. James. I watched what a the scare. Un- what a scare! <laughs> what a scare! I do like the fuck? idea of Luigi just being afraid to like enter every room that he has to. There's enter. these jump scares that keep happening, but they never get me. They're just like really telegraphed because they're for so. kids. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's awesome. Um, so I watched the Uncharted movie, James. I wanted I wanted to tell you about the Uncharted movie. I know we're on the we're on yes. the game the games podcast, but it's a game. It was a game. Tell me about the intro. Okay, so I'm gonna spoil. Stuff that is was shown in the trailers because I feel like that's I'm the... never gonna watch this movie. You, you could, you could go ahead and spoil it all. Now, Actually, James, I played Uncharted. Is it different than Uncharted? Have you played Uncharted? Yeah. Honestly, it's not terrible. This movie. <laughs> God. Damn. This movie is a solid seven out of ten. Six. You know, have out you of 10. Se- have you seen the reviews for it by the audience? No. The audience actually really likes this movie. Well, okay. so I'm guessing the audience is probably the gamers who know the story. So. It's not a good Uncharted movie. Like, it's not like... I wouldn't be like, this is, like, such a great interpretation. Like, The Last of Us show is coming out. Pedro Pascal's in it. Like, that that seems like it's going to be, like, a good adaptation. Someone took the the idea of Nathan Drake with the title Uncharted, and he goes, and he hunts treasure. And that's what they do. How how long have they been working on this movie, right? Um, Like, haven't they been working for such a long time? They've worked on this movie so long, James, that Mark Wahlberg went from starring as Nathan Drake to playing solely in this movie. That's how long they've tried to make this movie. And that is not a lie. That is a fact. Uh, This movie's been in production like 10 years, at least. Um, So Tom Holland plays Nathan Drake. And apparently how he got this... This is just interesting. How he got this role as as Nathan Drake 
was that he pitched to Sony a young James Bond movie where he played James Bond, but you wouldn't know it was a James Bond movie until the last lines of the movie, someone asks him his name and he was James Bond the whole time. And they were like, sounds really cool. Impossible to market, so we'll never do this movie. Um, (laughs) Because, like, the twist can't be that you play James Bond. Um, So they're like, why don't you just play Nathan Drake? Tom Holland is good in this movie. Tom Holland is not a great Nathan Drake, but he's just fun to watch at anything. He's just great. Um, And he moves around really fun. He does a lot of parkour. And he is jacked as shit in this movie. Damn. There's a workout scene, James, where, like, every muscle in his back is just there. And it's insane. More Jack than Spider Man. Oh my God, hands down! Like he's like Damn. big. He's like big. Um, I want to see a Jack Spider Man now. Like after <laughs> this latest movie, yeah, he just, just goes on like a huge big. He's just big old buff boy. Super buff. Yeah. Um, the plot of the movie very paint by numbers. Um, it's just another treasure hunting movie, and they you know go to a place and then they over explain a plot about Mangellan. And then probably make up a ton of stuff to make this a treasure hunt. That like, you know, they had treasure from this Spanish family that funded the Inquisitions and all of this stuff. Um, but but Tom Holland is having fun and he's flirting with with women. And he's he, you can tell he's happy he's not just playing Peter Parker. Um, he's having a great time. And the action is is fun enough to move scenes along where you're enjoying it. Like you're like, oh, yeah, it was, it was creative. Um they have some set pieces from the games. If you haven't played the games, James, you should really just play these games. Like, holy shit. You should just play Uncharted 1 through 4. They're great. Um, but they have, like, a scene from the games, which is, like, you fall out of an airplane in one of the games. And you're, like, it's, like, cargo. It's a very famous scene from, like, the yes. from the games. You're only a cargo plane and you're moving along. So that scene is just in the movie. Where, like, Tom Holland is jumping on cargo boxes that are falling out of a plane. Um, but then they have, like, fun twists to it. And you're, like, okay. Sure, this is a fun scene. Um, notice how it's, it's never like, this is incredible. It's always like, yeah, okay. Yeah, it's fun. sure. Yeah, it's moving yeah. along. Um, then they have like, you know, more fun scenes. Um, he does play a bartender. Uh, Nathan Drake bartends in the beginning of this movie. That's just the thing I didn't like about this movie. And he's doing a lot of like really annoying things where he's like flipping the bottles and like the mixing cups and stuff. And that was just like, nobody does this. You're being pretentious. And then there's a Herdy whole... trade for that. I'm sure he did. I mean, it looks like he's <laughs> actually doing it. He's like yeah, throwing he bottles and stuff. It's It's impressive. But yeah. nobody does this. <laughs> and then, like, there's a scene where, like, he does it while fighting people. And he's, like, fighting behind a bar. And it's just, like, it's, I hated that little, scene. Little Jackie Chan right there. Yeah, he's, like, you always catch a bottle and, like, smacking a guy in the head. Um, just meh. There is some great action, some great jokes. Um, and Mark Wahlberg is also in this movie. And Mark oh, yeah. Wahlberg plays Sully. And Sully in the games is Nathan Drake's, like, mentor figure that's, like, a wise cracking, cigar smoking. I don't yeah. goddamn yeah, Dorado, do you know, kid. <laughs> you know, that's who he is. Okay. Yep. Um, have you seen the movie Ted, where Mark Wahlberg yes. and a stuffed teddy bear hang out? Yes. Okay. Yes. Most of the movie, Mark Wahlberg seems like he's playing that character in a, um action movie. where no, he is no, Nowhere near Sully. <laughs> no. <laughs> and I swear that at the beginning of this movie, he's trying to kind of have the accent. And by yeah. the end, he's just like, I'm Mark Wahlberg. And like, I'm going to talk about being like crazy. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> I'm like, oh, kid, like, what are you doing around here? And you're just like, okay, like, you're like, he's the worst part of this movie. You're Mark Wahlberg. <laughs> yeah, like, he's just being Mark Wahlberg in this movie. Um, but that being said, it kind of works sometimes. There are some great back and forths between Tom Holland and him. They got good chemistry. Um, and then there is one action scene that's actually very fun, where in the trailers that's shown that a helicopter, two helicopters lift pirate ships out of an island and these pirate ships are flying. This is not in any of the games. It was a great scene, like a great idea and felt right out of uncharted. And it was like totally original and just thought that was pretty cool. Um, weird thing about this movie. He doesn't shoot anybody. He gets a gun once and fires it like at a guy in a stand. Like they're like both behind cover and he's shooting. And that's the amount of like guns that are used, um, like to kill people. Worst uncharted movie ever. Yeah, he, like, doesn't shoot anybody. And I think it's because, like, yeah. they probably didn't want Tom Holland just, like, killing a bunch of people because he's also Spider-Man. Yeah. But that's Uncharted. It's, like, Nathan Drake murders. Yeah, that is that is literally Uncharted. Shooting. Yeah, like, like thousands of people you kill in a game. Yeah. On this treasure hunt. And he doesn't do that in the movie. So that was a little weird. Um, mm-hmm. That being said, I, I recommend it if you, like, if you're interested in it and you like Uncharted. I don't think you're going to be as let down as like, or like, I don't think it's as bad as you think it's going to be. You don't think it's Morbius bad. 
No, no. Like, I don't think it's a bad, bad movie. Like, it's uh. like, what? Like, I told my mom today, I was like, if you want a fun adventure movie, you and, like, my stepdad should watch this movie. So someone who has no idea what Uncharted is would have a good time with this? I think so. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think Tom Holland is just good enough on screen that you just want to watch him. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, and there's a girl that plays uh, Chloe, who's a character from the game. She's, like, another treasure hunter that yeah. crosses paths. Um and she is like plays on like she's like Tom Holland's age. She's very good. She's I mean okay. probably the standout of the movie. Uh, oh. The villains suck. Antonio Banderas is a bad guy. He sucks. Oh no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't know. I don't know who's still acting these days. He's in this new Puss in Boots movie too. So I got that. To oh boy. To. Um, that's my review of the Uncharted movie. Not as bad as you would think. There Great. it is. That's the sound escape. That's our first movie movie review on this podcast. No, oh, yeah. Yeah, I just think with like mo- video game movies tend to be like really shitty, um, and this wasn't shitty. You know, I'm trying to think of like ones that were. I mean, Sonic the Hedgehog has been really good recently, but it's like, yeah, not really a video game movie. Did you so. see the second one? I have not. I want to see. That. Apparently, that's very Sonic yeah. fan good. I heard it's good. I mean, it's out. Oh, I got. I, mean, I, just, I just have not seen it. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I haven't seen that one yet. And then like I, the Resident Evil movies were always kind of bad. Um, and this Mario movie that's coming out, Chris Pratt. Chris Pratt. Pratt. Jeez, so ridiculous. I'm, yeah. Miyamoto's involved in it though, so I'll give. I'll watch it. I'll see what he's gonna do. Um, here's a weird thing about this Uncharted movie. My last thought about it: Uncharted has a great, great theme song. I'm sure you know it. The mm-hmm. that it's like used yeah. like it's used a few times. This movie like when he he puts on like the ring at one point like around his neck and it's like he's nathan drake now like he looks out a window and it like plays a theme song you're like all right sure the movie ends on like some really shitty fucking like pop song about treasure hunting and i'm like why isn't this movie ending with like the uncharted theme song that you've used in the movie it pissed me off and then and then it like starts the next credit so like you know like after the there's a mid credit scene Hi, Scout. Yeah. There's a mid credit scene, and then they play the, the soundtrack, like, oh, the get out of the theater music is, like, the, the theme song. Anyways. Nice. It just blew my mind that they didn't play this movie, the music, like, at all. So, yeah. There my, there's my uh, review of the <laughs> the Uncharted movie. Nice. What does Scout think? Scout had a great time, man. My cat loved it. No, you can't go nice. out the window right now. <sighs> Thank you. Um, okay. Uh, so, I wanted to talk to you about a game, though. Unless you, do you have something else to go through? No. No. Got Ro- Rogue Legacy 2. Yes. I really recommend you play this game, James. I Even mean, if I haven't played Rogue Legacy 1. Yes. I don't wow. think they they really connect. Because I played Rogue Legacy 1 a really long time ago on the PlayStation Vita. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I think the Rogue Legacy 1 came out like... The Vita? I played it on the Vita. Damn, that's an old game. I didn't even think it was that old. I know yeah. it was like a really early like Rogue Legacy. Yeah, I want to say it's like 2013... 2014 somewhere around I there i believe it yeah, i think probably. i was in college um yeah so rogue legacy uh 2 is the sequel to rogue legacy by cellar door games um and it is a a very roguelite game i mean literally that's in the title it, it's trying that where you play as a character and you go through a, the, the dungeon and try to find gold and the bosses that you need to beat and get new skills but then when you die your family lineage has signed this eternal contract to uh, live, like to hunt in this dungeon. Okay. Yeah. So when you die, your offspring then goes and hunts in the dungeon. But you like, you, it gets randomized. There's like three options, and they're randomized of like what your character traits are. Mm-hmm. And then you pick one of those characters. And then they'll have like a fun name, like, you know, Sir Godfrey or something. And. Then you go in there and then you die again. And then you pick like another of these like three uh, randomized choices of like a lot of things. So like basically what it'll be is like classes. There'll be like a warrior, an archer, and a wizard. And then it'll be like, okay, you have three of those classes. And then they all have like a spell and the spell is like randomized. Then they have like certain traits that are like almost negatives. Where like you can have um, like you can be colorblind. So everything in the world is black and white. Interesting. You can be um, like a cartographer where like every treasure chest is highlighted on your map, but you can't see the map. Nice. Like, so like it's stuff like that where like yeah. you'll get like these randomized things that are sometimes good or sometimes bad. And like if they're negative, they'll have like percentage bonuses to how much gold you get. So yeah. like um, there's like one where you have like one HP 
Like you, it's like frail bones or something where like, if you get hit, you die, but you get like 300% gold. So wow. like that, that's like a run of like, okay, this is just to go grab yeah, gold, just to collect some gold yeah. and like boost wow. up. So then when you die and you pick your character, then you go to your, like your castle and that's like outside of this dungeon. And that's where you're spending your gold and your resources is on this castle to unlock different, like, like buildings basically for the castle that give you different things. So it'll give you like different classes. They'll like, where you can unlock like a Valkyrie or a rogue or something like that. And then it'll also give you like different stat bonuses and then different like in dungeon things as well. Mm -hmm. Um, It's just the, the way that the system of like going out and getting um, like gold and bonuses and stuff to coming back and like what you're using it on and building out your like family tree basically is really fun. And I love like the randomization of them like getting stuck in this character of like, shoot, my character like can't see the enemies. Like they're just black blobs. And it's like, you have to go in and like, Whoa. like, yeah, it's or like one of them, James, you can have IBS where like you fart every so often. <laughs> like that's just <laughs> it. Um, yeah. Or like you can be like miniature where like, like you, your character's mini or like big or like just things like that, which are really interesting. That's and then fun. it's really fun. It makes it like yeah. changes up the gameplay a lot. Um, and just, yeah, just very different. Um, and then what you do is while you're in the dungeon, like I said, you're looking for chests and everything, but you're also finding relics that will give you like different powers. And then once you find a relic out in the real world, uh, it could be randomized onto your character. Hmm. Um, like as your lineage goes through. So it's really interesting. I've played probably 10 ish hours of it. I've beaten one major boss and I found the second one. Um, I'm not very good at the game. Um, cause it's a, a side scroller platformer, you know, hack and slash kind of game. And I'm not very yeah. good at those. Um, but it's very fun. And if you're in the mood for a roguelite, this, this is, is this is what I recommend. Damn. It has a, yeah, it's just got a really good loop to it. And in nice. your loop will take like, well, like sometimes you play Hades and like you're stuck in one for like 30, 40 minutes. The most you're playing one of these runs is like 15 minutes. So like you can just okay. do one or two pretty quick, yeah, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I really am enjoying it. Um, nice. Yeah. Do you have any questions? I know you kind of know of the game, so I'm curious if you have any. Yeah, yeah. I, I've I've seen some gameplay of it, and I've seen uh, some friends try it out recently. Like I was, I was mentioning before, uh, the podcast. Sorry. Uh, I just te- I told my mom earlier today about the Uncharted movie. As I finished talking about it, she texted me. What was the name of that movie you recommended we watch today? Sorry, that's just really funny to me. Oh, uh, d- <laughs> my mom's like watching the Uncharted movie. Everybody. Yeah. I'll let you know how uh, Julie likes it. But yeah, I, I played uh, Dead Cells, which what you're describing kind of reminds me of Dead Cells. Very a bit. Yes, I think Dead Cells is better, to be full. I oh. think the combat in Dead Cells is better. Okay. But I think the leveling up of this is better. The rogue lightness. Yes, the rogue lightness of yeah. this is better. That's the than only the thing I didn't like about Dead Cells was the rogue lightness. Mm-hmm. The progression sucked, but uh, yeah. Okay. Very similar game, yeah. I think Dead Cells is this like, out on Game Pass? No, this is not on Game oh, Pass, okay. and it's not. It's only on Xbox and PC at the moment, um, okay. but not on Game Pass, which I was kind of not. I'm mean, not surprised about, but bummed. It felt like a game that usually would come to Game Pass, you know? Yeah, yeah, I agree. So okay, yeah, but I really I'm like if you're in the mood for a roguelite, this is a good one to go this to. Is one. Yeah, it's nice. it's just got a lot of fun. It's and it has a lot of zaniness and it's it's got humor to it, so it's it's interesting. So yeah, Rogue Legacy too. What you going to do? Hey, forget hey. about it. Now, James, I want to talk to you about one more thing before we go. What, like, there are games we know that are coming out eventually. What, what are games are you excited to play or, like, curious about? I'm just kind of curious at this point. Like, what are, like, some of the games that you're most hyped about? I know God of War is kind of one of God the of obvious ones. God of War is definitely one of them. And um, Zelda, but... <laughs> do you have any off the top uh, of your head? Even if they're just kind of random. Mainly those two. Uh, I mean, some ones that are coming out, like, close... Mm-hmm. Uh, Diablo Mortal is definitely something I should for the PC, the yeah. PC version, which the beta is supposed to start in June. Uh, PC beta. Uh, PC beta. Oh, cool. It comes out. The PC beta comes out when the game releases mobile. Okay. Now and then to that extent, I'm also in. You know, I'm interested in a lot of Blizzard games right now, just because having played the Overwatch two beta recently, I'm curious what they're doing there. Diablo four is supposed to come out. Like, there's a lot of stuff that mm-hmm. Blizzard has lined up that is like what's going on there like what are you what are you releasing so yeah i'm curious because they're, they're they're making some moves right now but uh to me it's like a deflection of what their situation is as a studio mm-hmm. um so it could just be a lot of junk 
I'm up. fascinated with Blizzard when, when Microsoft officially owns it. Yeah. What, what they do with it. Right. That's that's what I can't wait for. Like so once that's Phil next Spencer year. has his fucking hands on Blizzard, what does he do? Reignite some of that old IP that they abandoned. That's what I'd say. Yeah. 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 Make, a, make a new Warcraft. Make a new, like, RTS make a new, Warcraft. Yeah, make a new Warcraft. Uh, don't let Heroes of Storm like, be how it is. Yeah. Don't let Overwatch do what it's doing right now. <laughs> Um, I, I, I feel like there's just a lot of stuff that's stagnant. They, they, I think what happened with Blizzard is they stretched too thin mm-hmm. and they will repri- well, the way they reprioritize sucked because they would grab members from other teams and just destroy those teams because they were core members. Oh, and so okay. the directors have felt really, yeah, but, but, yeah. And so they would pull people off projects or cancel projects and put them on stuff or they would put them on unnecessary projects that never like saw the light of day. And so that's just, that's just clear misdirection. Yeah. Like not not a cl- you have you you basically have leadership that's not like knowing what they're doing, and the ones that did know what they're doing, like Jeff Kaplan and all those people who did, like left. Mm-hmm. I mean that's what you're gonna do. Uh, you had the Hearthstone director leave. You had Overwatch. I'm sure there's many others that I could, can't name right now. I mean you had the president leave. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And they've all what did what have they done? They've all gone and went to other studios or made their own studios. Mm-hmm. So now I'm curious what they're working on. I don't think anything comes out this year, but maybe no. next year they start like talking about like, hey, we got this going. Yeah. So that'd be interesting. And maybe where... maybe uh, Microsoft works with them or something. I don't know. That'd be interesting. Yeah. Where where did Jeff did Jeff Kaplan go anywhere? Yes. Big or where did he go? Oh no 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 sorry Jeff Kaplan actually like fell off the radar. Yeah okay that's what I thought. Yeah, yeah. he definitely like is not doing anything. Yeah okay that's the other guy from the Heart the Hearthstone game director went to in, to a studio but yeah Jeff Kaplan kind of just disappeared. Out. Yeah, I don't know where he is. Yeah, so he has he has no. Yeah, yeah, and I think I can't remember who the the original Blizzard president. That dude, he went off to another game studio as well. Mm-hmm. I remember that. Yeah, Mike Morheim, Morheim, this is his name. Yeah, I'm. Uh, are you gonna play this uh, Saints Row game? You have any interest in this mm-hmm. new Saints Row? I, I have no interest since, since Saints Row Three. Basically, I really played one. This, what's the, once once they went to Saints Row Four and it got all really crazy, this this series kind of died. It used to be like a GTA competitor. Well, that's me. what I think this is supposed to try to be again. Is they're like gonna get away from aliens the and goofy zaniness yeah. that it had. Yeah. Okay. Then yeah. maybe I will. I'll try to. I don't know. I'm interested to go back and play Dying Light Two. I think once it's like really on sale. Um, yeah. Once it's like fifteen twenty bucks. I, I started playing it and it's just like there's so much stuff to do with a friend and we just kind of like dropped it to play Elden Ring. Yeah, I think Elden Ring got in the way. Yeah, of Elden Ring stuff. got away a lot of stuff. So it's just I played. I, have, I need to go back and like play. another two hours of Horizon Zero Dawn, or no Forbidden West. Forbidden West, yeah. It just it just wasn't like I like I I'm it's good it's pretty but like I just there's something about like the open world that I just don't give a shit about. I don't know. Elden Ring I think spoiled it for me a little bit too. Yeah, how's it? Elden Ring spoiled a lot for me, so it's it's been hard. To it sucks, but it's all but it's also a great thing because to have that kind of standard that came out mm-hmm. is such a beautiful thing. And I always talk about like it, you're never gonna get that ever again. No one's ever gonna have something like this and keep it self contained. Yeah, they kept it so under the radar what they had, and just like here, play it, and it's like, oh my god, what you have this hiding? It was so like any other studio would have just... blown it up. I know, I know. Yeah, I think that's you would have so had. Great. Yeah, you would have had Todd Howard out there like it just works and you know like ex- talking about it. <laughs> yeah, here in the expansive world of the land yeah. between. Um, yeah, it, it's like let's take a look at Kaylin. Yeah, <laughs> They're right. going to like show they up everything. Yeah, like, yeah, they would have showed off everything. Yeah, here's our developer doc on America and Wow, like, is it that great? Yeah. <laughs> look at this boss. Do you see how the dragon They, they didn't flies? show shit. No. Like you watch the trailer, you're like, "Oh, okay." I don't get Dark what's Souls happening. Game. Yeah. It's another Dark Souls game, and I guess, yeah. I feel like like Legend like Breath of the Wild had a very similar marketing of like they just that, showed that, the great that as well. where they were like and that, here's the game. Kind of. I, th- I this is not to say anything, but it's such a Japanese thing. Yeah. Like for them not to like kind of like go all outlandish. Maybe with some games, but with these certain games, it's like really beautiful how they like present them. Yeah. <laughs> um the I'm other happy. game, Hi Scout. The other game that I'm looking forward to, I was thinking about this the other day, because uh, Star Wars is on my mind a lot recently. Well, Star Wars is always on my mind a lot, but recently, because Obi-Wan, um, the show coming out. Yes. Next week. Oh, God, I can't wait. I'm watching Revenge of the Sith tomorrow night. So excited. Wow. That being said, I am really, really excited for, which I think we now know the title, Star Wars Jedi Survivor. That Well, that's what they think it is. It, from what I read the article, 
they confirmed it sarcastically, but it was like text, so they don't know if it's that's exactly it. Yeah. That'd be a great name, though. I think it will that's be. That's actually yeah, that's that's actually a really good name. They should go with that if they don't. I'm surprised that we're not fallen. It's not fallen something, but that's okay. I think Star Wars Jedi is the title we're going with here rather yeah. than Star Wars Fallen. Survivor, that makes sense though, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, where is yeah. that? Yeah. Um, I'm really excited for that game. I was thinking about this last night. I'm just so excited for it because I feel like that game, the first one, I mean, fantastic. I, we loved it. Fantastic. Yeah. Um, it, it did such a great job. It was job our game of the year. It was our game of the year. Our first yeah. year of ever the podcast. It was between that right. and Control. And I still think we chose right. Um, Me too. I think it was just such a great experience, like what it is and what it was and nailed like that Metroidvania, Dark Soulsy um, yep. kind of nature of it. And like how you move through the levels and all your force powers. What do they do next? Because they can't do the same thing. Like they can't have you have to re-get force push, you know? No. So like, what is this game going to expand to? And like, that makes me really intrigued. Do you think they keep it single player? Yes. Okay. Because I think I think Respawn was able to look at EA and be like, we we need single player games here. Like that's how good it did. I think you just open it up. Like in terms of how it worked beforehand, you were kind of like just traveling to these planets, but you didn't really have a say. Mm-hmm. I think you really open it up because now your goal is to kind of like go and find out the other Jedi. So that's what I was more, hoping for. Or sensitive. Like more big open world. Open it up. Yeah. Yeah. Introduce some interesting stuff. You know that's what i want i just wanted a really good star wars game but i was just yeah. thinking about that. i was like damn i want and like what are they gonna do with cal and like oh, cal's great he's like, a great this character is, what i mean i don't want to like see anything but what do you think like happens to cal do you think like so now we're just going into the star wars portion of this podcast but there's a reason that this that the character in the video game looks exactly like the actor like mm-hmm. i think that they can use this actor in other the stuff. movie i'd be so shows, happy shows movies show yeah. you know like they've uh vanity fair did a whole blowout on star wars like a few days ago and basically the the thing was like our next movie is pretty far off it's taika watiti's gonna make a movie that's what's right gonna be star can, wars. i'm happy for that me too like it's great it's gonna be awesome and then they yeah. basically were like but like star wars we've realized like we shouldn't make these big temples like it should be continuous storytelling and mm-hmm. so like i think really star wars is gonna live on disney plus like that's the yeah they fucked up the trilogy um like a lot where like now they're trying to figure it out with disney plus and i think that's really smart i'm excited for that um and so i'm just curious like what this game is and and do we see like crossovers in between because like the inquisitors that we see in this game they're gonna some of them are in the obi-wan show like yeah it should be i think you should see crossovers i think you should see like signs of stuff from you know like Mm -hmm. you know like like he saw darth vader where i'm spoiling it a little bit but you know that that game's really old though yeah but like do more stuff with real but characters. also be like maybe maybe a little bit rogue one ish where like some characters just yeah appear and die you know? and die like I'm, I'm i think you need to I'm this really is a really deep topic i think in terms of like the star wars timeline it's an incredibly like it's like but it's the purge basically like yeah, it's, it's the coolest timeline it's the coolest it's time the period. it's a, it's one of the coolest timelines. yeah i'm yeah. glad like we got this game and i like what we're gonna have with the show too mm-hmm like oh, that dark we're, we're talking about the show like, yeah, yeah, this is just, the, like this is so i always cool. talk about it with you is like i always like they what they needed to do is do like more dark star wars and they're doing mm-hmm. it yeah why don't they do it with other series like why can't we get some more like you know well i guess we get some stuff with marvel but like we need more dark stuff like something really yeah. dark that's what i think like uh, obi-wan's gonna be i think not like dark in a sense of like you know gory or anything but like heavy like the topic is gonna heavy be heavy topics yeah, yeah. It, this it is gonna be. be heavy topics you're you have people being hunted like it's mm-hmm. pretty it like you know, if you relate it to history, it's it's pretty dark. You know, yeah. what's happening? Yeah, I and I also think it's like you know the final level of Fallen Order, like the yeah. water base that's yep. in the Obi Wan show. Like, which I think is just so cool that like that wow. design building is in the Obi Wan show. That like, water base is one of my favorite parts of that game. Oh yeah, it's so uh, cool. you you have like the fear from Darth Vader like come to you, and it reminds me of like the Rogue One like scene where like Darth Vader's like coming, and they're yeah. trying to get the message out. Like, <sighs> dude. I'm so excited. But yeah, I was just great. thinking about Fallen Order a lot yesterday, and like, I really want to play the next one. Like, I don't want to play Fallen yeah. Order again. I've played it twice. I'm I'm happy with it. But like, mm-hmm. I really want another entry into that, and like some more Star Wars games. We just need Star Wars games. We need to see good Star Wars games, and we have had had them recently. So I'm happy mm-hmm. about that. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So um, yeah, that, that, that's it's a great time to be a Star Wars fan. That's what I'll say. Like, there's a lot of great stuff coming out, and to be excited for. Yeah, I um, agree. We're getting into the Andor we're, shows coming. 
Yeah. Did Did you see the She Hulk Attorney at Law trailer? Yeah. What What's going on, Disney? What are we doing? Dude, I love that this is where we're at now in this podcast. This is actually my favorite part. Is the Marvel portion now? <laughs> Have you seen Where's Doctor Disney Strange? Plus? No. Okay, you need to see Doctor Strange because I want to. Is talk- that why? No no, 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 no. I just think that we're getting to the point where like Marvel may have too much content. Damn. And Marvel might, like, I don't think it's going to be. Drop the ball on some stuff? Yes. Some stuff yeah. is just going to be meh. I understand. And that's fine. But yeah. it's just like they've had a lot of great Marvel stuff recently. Uh, she Hulk looks bad. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. The She Hulk show is. It even looks like it's suffered on animation, which you would never say that about Marvel. You would never say, like, okay, yeah, they're, they're suffering on She animation. doesn't look good as She Hulk. No. It looks bad. And, like, like the story, like, the, the world building stuff in Marvel is usually always kind of fun. So maybe there'll be some cool stuff in there. But, like, overall, it just does not look like a show that I'm like, oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm not excited about the show. So, like, I mean, it could prove me wrong. It could be, like, a twisted up, I don't know. Yeah. They like, definitely, what, what I saw in the trailer did not look. No, and, like, like Miss Marvel, the trailer, like, the tone is very kiddie and everything. The Miss Marvel show. Yes. Still look good. Like, it's still yeah. like, oh, Marvel's oh, yeah. going to do, like, a fun you know like t- high school kind of genre movie or show the she hulk was like oh what are you what are we doing and maybe this is just a really yeah, bad trailer like, or something and i or, think it could be the trailer but it looks very tropey like channel three kind of like your six o'clock show and i think it's supposed to be a little bit like wandavision was sitcom-y but wandavision but had there a was cool- a point to that exactly yeah and is you have to get to through this? the initial sitcom for it to blossom so that's why i'm like i hope this is like that yeah i don't know i don't know and maybe just like, I'll, I'll, i'm not gonna be watching i'm gonna be watching star wars <laughs> yeah exactly yeah we all got obi-wan yeah, coming up that's what I'm saying. you got another option you don't have to watch more yeah i don't know it'll just be interesting i'm curious how it, how it all works also just think about obi-wan i just want to put this out there for anybody that's really excited about the series they gave us a boba fett show did you watch book of boba fett because i'm about to spoil nope it. nope i'm not gonna watch it. i don't know if i okay do they I gave us it? they gave yes you do yeah because they gave us a Boba Fett show, and two episodes of that show were about the Mandalorian and, and Grogu. And mm-hmm. they didn't tease any of that ever. And they did one of the coolest things in Star Wars within this kind of mediocre Boba Fett show. So Obi-Wan could have episodes that we don't even like know are coming. Of like, yeah. do we get like a Darth Vader-centric episode where one episode is just Darth Vader? Yeah, you do. Oh, fuck. They tease, they tease stuff already for like, like I, who's good. I know he's in it. Yeah, he's in it, so you know they're gonna do some stuff with it. You don't just have him in it. Oh my god, it's gonna be so good. And not do anything with it. I think we get a lot of young Anakin stuff. Like they fill out like they 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 CGI both of them down to like what they look like in episode two or three. I wouldn't Maybe. be shocked. Not too about that. old, you know. No, they can remake Luke Skywalker with artificial intelligence. They can do yeah. this. Yeah, yeah, they can. Yeah. Any That's final cool. thoughts on Star Wars, James? I'm excited. Oh, and the, it's true. two episodes next week. And they're like, hey, we're sorry. We're not going to come out the Wednesday, which is great. Mm-hmm. It should come out on the Fridays like it usually does. Yeah. Like, hey, but instead we're going to give you two episodes. So we got two episodes coming out next week. So. I bet the second episode ends with Darth Vader. Already? You think right away? Yeah, I think you get him pretty quick. I, I don't think in the first episode, but I think like second episode and then you got to wait a week before Darth Vader comes. But like we hear him or we see him just like very briefly. That would ruin me. Like, like excited or just really sad that that's like he's sad that i have to wait another week i know exactly i got really relieved when i realized i wasn't going on my trip to europe while this show was still coming out which is so stupid but i was like oh thank god i don't have to watch this on like an ipad yeah well thank you so much for watching the 96th episode of the side escape star wars gaming podcast i'm your host jake burke that's james st charles and we will see you next week maybe with ted maybe he's dead Uh, we don't know we'll see We'll see.